the number one source of friction in your engine is not what you think. Piston rings rubbing against the cylinder walls generate more friction than any other part of the engine. More friction and temperature means more wear and less horsepower. Fortunately, the team at Total Seal knows how to reduce friction and wear through innovative piston ring design. If it takes a piston, Total Seal can build a better ring. For more than a decade, FTI has strived to become the leader in the aftermarket, performance, transmission, and converter industry. We've joined forces with McLeod Driveline Components under the leadership of Top Fuel Funny Car Pilot Paul Lee and now have a larger distribution network, more resources, and more power. Come see us in the pits and ask how you can join the FTI family. It's not cheating. It is the competitive edge. This is WFO Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to WFO Radio. You know, the 2024 NHRA Mission Foods Drag Racing Series is getting closer and closer. Pretty soon, we'll be burning a little nitro, and the funny car category going to look a little different in 2024 on this show I'm super excited. We've got pretty much the whole proc family, not everybody, but we got a lot of them, right? We got Jimmy and we got Austin and we got Thomas and they are going to race together earlier this uh, year. Robert Hyde announced he was going to step aside a little bit for a personal medical situation that he intends to be back, which is exciting. And obviously Robert, a staple of the sport, 65 career wins, four wins last year, back to back runners up in the points right down to the wire. But now Austin Proc get an opportunity to drive a funny car, which is kind of where we all felt like he would be. I've got great sponsors and people who make it possible for me to go WFO. I'm going to tell you about them at the midpoint of the show. Let's bring on our guests because they're a little busy, right? Let's first bring on Austin. Then we'll bring on Jimmy and then we'll bring on Thomas. Look at these guys. We got a bunch of procs on the show. What's up, procs? How are you? Doing good. Good. How are you yeah, doing? Yeah, doing Joe? good. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Happy New Year. Hopefully you had a great uh, break. But the news, let me start with Jimmy. The news that you and Robert would not be able to start the season together. Um, I, I don't wish, you know, like I, I'm assuming and I've heard that Robert is confident he'll get back in the seat. Uh, I don't expect you can tell us his personal medical information, but can't help but uh, thinking about the guy, he's been such a staple for the sport. What can you share with us, and and uh, how excited are you for this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I it's it's tough. I know how hard this is on Robert. Uh, you know, he's one of the toughest uh, guys I know, and uh, a very serious competitor. And this was not easy for him to do. You know, uh, I knew that he didn't feel well. You know, but I didn't know that it was going to turn into you know, him not being able to have to be out of the car long enough to, um, you know, uh, not, not, uh, you know, get started and everything and see how it all worked out. But I know this is really tough on him and, uh, but you know, you got to take care of your health first and we all understand that. And, you know, this gives Austin a, you know, a, a great, And we are fighting the internet a little bit. Uh, Austin, on that note, I felt like the funny car was where you would end up. You've driven top field dragsters. You got four wins. You got eight finals, 70 starts, one race last year, won the quickest race of all time. But funny car seems to be like a character closer to you, to, to the Austin that I know. What do you think? Yeah. I've always dreamt of driving a funny car. Um, you know, obviously Never wanted it to happen in this situation, this scenario, but uh, it is a great opportunity for me. Uh, we'll definitely miss Robert, you know, uh, at the racetrack. And, uh, you know, being a, I've cheered Robert on, you know, since I was about eight years old, so nine years old. So um, it'll be a little different not seeing his name on the AAA car, but uh, I am really excited. You know, this is a great opportunity for me to uh, make a run at a championship. You know, this car was a uh, uh, hell of a contender you know, last year, and it, it's been one of the most dominant funny cars in the past decade. So uh, really excited to stand on the gas and uh, just get things going, get all the nerves out of the way and uh, jitters and bugs and um, just uh, go see how we shape up to the competition. 
Super excited. Thank you to all the John Force racing fans who are sharing the show out there on their social, however you choose to do it. I think this is just a tremendous story. And Thomas, last year we spoke on the starting line a couple of times, and I, I really liked the enthusiasm that you brought to the job. But I'm sure these guys brought love the innovation that you brought to the job in your engineering mind. I've talked to your mom and she says, like, my boys are the two different sides of the universe, right? Like Austin is all emotion and fun and you're the analytical thinker type. What was it like last year uh, working with your dad and now you get to work with your brother? Oh, it was great last year. Um, I really had to learn an awful lot to be able to do the job um, and compete at a high level, like the car's capable of, you know, just like Austin was talking about the car is very competitive and you want to keep that status, you know, that's where that car belongs, you know, or, you know, Robert's funny car, my dad tuning it. So, you know, that's going, get, getting through the season and getting into the countdown when we started running well, it was, you know, it really made me feel a lot better about myself and my ability to do it. And now having Austin drive the car, it's kind of full circle. We've, we raced together a long time growing up and, you know, it was always, my dad was obviously traveling a lot, so we had to do it ourselves. And so we got really close doing that and to kind of, to do it at a professional level is honestly pretty unbelievable. So we're, we're excited about it for sure. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, dad. Okay. Forget Jimmy, the crew chief, Jimmy, the dad, like your boys, you and your boys are going out there to race in funny car and the mission foods drag racing series. And you're the dad, you're the leader and one's driving and one's helping you. And that's an amazing, like in the old school world that would happen more often, like family funny cars, you know what that's all about, but Cornwell and AAA and Chevrolet and John force racing. Like this has to be a bit of a dream come true for you, Jimmy Proc. Yeah, it is. You know, um, like I said, we started, my kids and I, we started racing together. I don't know, you know, when they were, you know, fairly young, probably 10, 11 years old. And, uh, you know, to see it all come full circle, you know, and that they are getting this opportunity is, uh, you know, it's cool. It's like, you know, I, it, my dad got me started and he gave me a chance and, you know, drug me around the road and let me work on the car. And, uh, you know, do that. And it gave me an opportunity to get into this business. And, you know, it, I've done it a long time and it was fortunate, you know, to be able to do that. I've worked with a lot of great people, but, you know, to have my kids here and, you know, this is another generation of this and, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, we just have to, you know, it's the same old stuff. I'm glad to do it and all this, but this is a job. And, you know, we all got to go out there and do our job. And, you know, we're a race team and uh, they call it a race team because everybody on that thing's important. The guy that drives it, the guy, everybody that does everything. And uh, we're looking forward to it. And we got to, um, you know, it'll be cool. Like, uh, I'm I'm proud of my kids and uh, we got to go out there and do a good job. The family dynamic though. Okay. Like me and my dad raced together and not to compare what we were doing to what you're doing, but there are times where you're, you know, because you're a family, you're maybe more comfortable than you would be in a situation where you're with, uh, you know, work colleagues. Right. And that, maybe brings a little more emotion to the table or maybe not Austin. What, what about that? Like how have you guys, you guys have been working around each other, but how is that dynamic uh, with your family? Uh, you know, we're all, uh, we're all human for sure. Uh, but we've been racing together. You know, I started driving race cars when I was 10 years old and Thomas was always my crew chief. And my dad was always, um, you know, when he wasn't racing, he was always there working too. So, uh, you know, we've been working together a really long time. And, um, I think, uh, you know, the older you get, the more you, uh, respect that and, and enjoy that. So, uh, we've always got along. I got to work with my dad in 2021 on the car and that went really well. Um, you know, uh, no family feuds or anything like that. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think we'll all work very well together. We're all, we all think similar and, uh, we all have the same goal of going out there and, and winning trophies. So, um, I think, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And this is something that all of us are, you know, going to cherish for the rest of our lives. You know, uh, 
the fact that all three of us are working on the same race car, I'm driving it, they're tuning it. That's an unbelievable um, experience. And we're definitely going to take advantage of it, enjoy it. You know, you, you never know when something like this is going to come around again. Yeah. Like I'm getting like a little emotional just thinking about it, right? Like the fathers and sons of the world and fathers and daughters these days too, getting to go out and race together. Uh, just un unbelievable. So uh, you mentioned it earlier, Austin, just to uh, like for news purposes, you're going to be together for a championship run. I was unsure of this was even talking with Alan yesterday. Like, is this a five race thing? Is it a seven race thing? Is it for the whole season? Like, do we know? Yeah, uh, we don't we don't really know. Um, you know, obviously, you want to see Robert get back um, as soon as he can and get healthy. Uh, we're all praying for that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just unknown right now. So uh, we're just going to enjoy it as long as we can. All right. Let me ask Thomas. Thomas, you threw yourself into this deal, right? You've, you've been involved in other forms of motorsports and you come into NHRA with your engineering mind and you dive into uh, Mission Foods Funny Car, formerly Camping World Funny Car. The level of competition has never been more difficult. And that's not my opinion. That's what other people tell me. What are you seeing out there, Thomas? And what's it going to take to be successful in 2024? Yeah, I mean, it you're right. It's it's extremely difficult to have any sort of advantage. You know, you look back at last year, we won races and you know, got low ET by thousandths of a second or a thousandths of a second. So, you know, it's just it's knowing your stuff in my opinion, it's analyzing the data and seeing what works in certain conditions and just try to maximize that and just be at your best at all times try to take the emotion out of it and believe the data and believe what information you get from the race car and just make the best decisions that you can make. You know, the game doesn't really change like, you know, for any of us, it's just, we're just trying to analyze everything and just make the best decisions that we can make and put together, you know, different runs or, you know, for different sets of conditions and just be prepared to be able to make those calls, you know, and call the shots and, Hopefully everything goes your way. Driver drives good, car runs good, and we win rounds. Jimmy, I'd, I'd love for you to add on to that a little bit. You've been through these fights. You finished second past two years in a row in championship battles that really could have gone either way uh, with other drivers in the mix also, right? It was not a two-horse race by any means. There were the big three, then there was the big four. It seems to be ever-expanding. Of course, John Force, the boss, has had himself a pretty good hot rod over the past couple of years. What are you seeing out there and what do you feel uh, it's going to take to be successful in 2024? Well, we'll have to be better than we were last year. And I think with a lot of how uh, things have unfolded with people moving around, maybe Wilkerson being a full time crew chief and not driving, you know, there's a lot of cars, I think everyone is capable you know people go through ups and downs in this you know you can you can get off base a little bit or sometimes you change things and you're trying to make things better and you go backwards for a while but the competition i it, it's just elevating every year you know you a task is car caps hagen uh you know any of them I mean, the, the, like Tasca's car was better last year than it's been. So, you know, you have to look at that car and you would expect, you know, they'll be that good or or better. And, you know, there's all the normal people that are there and uh, you don't know who else is going to step up. You know, Wilkerson's cars could, J.R. Todd, uh, like any of them. You know, you, you've seen all of these, uh, a lot of cars are capable of running quick then it comes down to how many times can you do it and how do you race the conditions and uh you know the uh you know adjust to the adjust to all the conditions you know we changed stuff last year after losing the championship in 22 tried to fix some of that stuff make stuff better well we caused ourselves some issues that um you know, we had to sort through and we really didn't start uh, getting stuff together till we went out west. You know, once we went out west and we came back, by the time we got to Topeka, Brainerd or Indy, our car was coming around and we got it running good when we needed to run good. And we started high enough in the countdown to give ourselves a shot, you know, and that's 
that's pretty much it's going to be the same this year. It's just going to be where is that level of competition, but it's probably going to be tougher than it was before. Yeah, and and so you'll be starting the season with a kind of a continuation evolution to that tur- tune up that you just described. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. You know, we have some things we didn't get to, and then you always sit down. I mean, you have to analyze what you did good, what you did bad. And then, you know, you always have to, in my opinion, we're always looking for ways to be better. You have to do that or you'll be left behind. You know, there's always people out there working, trying, and, you know, people are going to get better. People are going to find it. And so I don't, we don't ever sit still, you know, but we have a good baseline to go to. We have some things we want to try and it's just the evolution. It's just the, the thing is, is, you know, you can have a list that's really big, but you only get so many runs and you have to, you have to work your way through it. Uh, and it takes time. You got to be patient. You know, sometimes that's hard to do, but you do have to be patient and methodically, you know, work your way through things like, we have some stuff that, you know, Austin's different weight than Robert. So we're not sure. We've looked into all that, assessed it. And, you know, we have to go run the car and see how it acts. You know, we have an idea of what it may do, but till we step on the gas and go get some data, we really don't know. So, you know, there's stuff we're going to have to work through here early in the year and, is it going to throw us a bump, make some adjustments? We're not sure, but we, you know, we've, we've looked at everything, tried to analyze it as best we can. We have ideas and what to look for. And, uh, we got to go get running and get him some seat time so he can get adapt to a funny car from the dragster. Yeah. I'd love to hear you too, Austin and, and Thomas, you feel free to get in, but I'm going to start out with Austin. I know you guys got the big money race over in Bradenton. I assume you're going to be driving for that and that's where you're going to be getting a lot of your seat time, but vehicle dynamics wise, it's one of the things we talk about the most Austin is that driving a top fuel dragster and driving a funny car are two different animals. You got caps out there like taunting the top fuel guys that it's uh, you know, it's like a delicate thing and that the, you know, the funny car guys are, you know, manhandling their machines. There's a lot more input to drive it, all of that stuff. You've driven the funny car before. So give us your assessment and uh, you know, Jimmy and Thomas, just uh, if you want to pile on the conversation about some of those differences and potential challenges, right? Like what, don't you know, like you don't know what you don't know, but Jimmy knows what it is because he's done it all. Austin. Yeah. Um, they're two totally different beasts. I mean, you know, you have a 125 inch wheelbase and a 300 inch wheelbase. They, they don't handle anything alike. And, um, from the little bit of experience that I have in the funny car, uh, they kind of change the way they drive from the first like zero to 300 foot and then 300 foot to the finish line. Uh, like the dynamic of how you drive the race car changes. Um, I think probably with something to do with the arrow, you know, getting the body down. Um, but yeah, they, uh, you definitely have to manhandle them more, but, uh, when you're trying to run these cars as quick as they are anymore, you have to be really finesse on the wheel, like a dragster, you know, you can't be in there yanking on the wheel because it'll just pull the tires loose when you're on the ragged edge, like this, uh, car can be. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm up for the challenge. Uh, I got licensed in the funny car to start. That was the first blown nitro car I drove and uh, fell in love. You know, it's right up my alley. I like the short wheelbase. Um, you know, it wants to hunt around a little bit more and it, it allows me to showcase some of my talents growing up circle track racing a little bit more. It just suits my style. So uh, I like having the engine in front of me. Uh, it's just rowdy, you know, uh, lifting the body up, seeing all the crew guys crowd around the car while it's running. Uh, for a driver, there's nothing cooler than that. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get to Bradington. Uh, I'm ho- I'm hoping the weather is uh, uh, good to us so we can, you know, maximize our amount of runs uh, to get me comfortable and, and get this uh, Cornwall Tool Chevrolet dialed in uh, and try and go win some big money. Yeah, exciting. Jimmy and Thomas, the, um, you know, the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. What is uh, Austin, you know, what lies ahead for Austin as he, you know, tries to keep this thing in the groove in competitive situations. I know there are some tracks that are trickier than others, uh, et cetera, and so on. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it is, you know, and that's what I said. They asked me the other day, I mean, how many runs you 
is it going to take? You know, well, I, I don't know, but to run through all the different, you know, scenarios and conditions and all that, you know, it's going to, it's going to take a handful of runs. It could be 20, 25, you, you know, you don't know. And you got to go out there and, you know, repeat and, you know, do it. And, uh, you know, he's got to feel it and figure it out. But I mean, I, I feel he has good feel for all that. And so it's just a matter of, you know, whatever the learning curve is, you know, to do that. But I mean, I, you know, I believe he can do it. He has the feel and all the stuff. And we just got to, you know, uh, go out there. And like I said, run the thing, try to make it go up down the track. And then, you know, as time goes on, he did good in the dragster and we're going to smoke the tires. It's going to do all that. You got to learn to recover it and, and do all that to be the, you know, the, the total package, but that just comes with experience and, you know what, there's, you can't buy experience. You have to earn it. And uh, so that's what we got to do. I love that. That's a great quote. Thomas, anything you want to add, uh, you know, not really yeah. new to drag racing, new to working with your dad and your brother driving. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah. I mean, they kind of hit the nail on the head of, with a lot of it, but yeah, it's just the little things like dad said that just take time of, running the car it's no different than when i learned my job last year we had to just go through all the conditions and all the different things and you just have to do it like it's just takes experience it's the only way to figure it out and you know like these cars everything's just a little i guess excited is a word like a little more excited than a dragster like you go over a bump they get a little more upset they drop a hole they steer around more they smoke the tires they get a little more out of shape you know, so it's just those things that it just takes seat time and Austin has the ability and that's why he's driving the car, you know, because he can drive it. So um, that's where we're at and we're going to be in good shape when it counts. Okay, Austin, like this is all analytical and technical and that's what makes it go. But at some point you're staging up against another human in the other lane and they want to load you up and send you and your fam home. And uh, it's exciting that you're going to be racing against a whole new group of personalities out there. Like you kind of became a part of Top Fuel. We got very used to you running up against Justin Ashley and others out there, kind of dodging the Tony Stewart bullet that was coming, which I'm I'm sure is a bit of a bummer for you, right? To run yeah, up against good for Smoke. Him, though. Yes. See, nice. <laughs> a little trash talk. On the, but who are you excited to stage up against? John Force. Uh, you know, I've always dreamt of that. You know, uh, you can uh, almost bet this year I'll have the top bulb out on him at at some point <laughs> by the match race, so I don't get uh, chewed out by my old man. But uh, that's always <laughs> been a dream of mine. Uh, chunk it in there on him and uh, maybe hang him out. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, all jokes aside, I'm excited to race the funny car category. You know, I've watched and cheered my dad on and Robert for so long. Um, you know, it's going to be cool to, you know, uh, line up of a, against a batch of new competitors, you know, learn their tendencies, learn their styles and, uh, you know, try and leave first like uh, like everybody else wants to do. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Racing Caps, Hagen, you know, that's going to be uh, definitely cool stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully uh, I'll wish them the best of luck to send in the Prof Home family. OK, Jimmy. Crew Chiefs, what about it? Is he allowed to chunk it in there against force? <laughs> Well, maybe in the final. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's yeah. great. That's great. I like win lights, so whatever it takes. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. All yeah. all the deep staging does is hurt you for lane choice, and sometimes that matters, and sometimes it doesn't. But mostly, it doesn't. You know, the, the bottom line is you got to step on the gas on time, and your car's got to run good enough, and all that the all that does all that stuff does is change the numbers around but it doesn't really change the result got it all right i know you guys are busy and so i want to let you go this doesn't need to be like prolonged this is uh getting to know what's going on and i'm excited but is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to put out there and that goes to each one of you um because this is a rare opportunity to have you all out here together thomas for instance Anything you want to let the fans of drag racing know at the start of 2024 as you get ready to embark on this journey with your brother and your dad and, and uh, at John Force Racing and all of that? Yeah, I mean, personally for me, like having a year under my belt 
makes me feel a lot better about everything. And I feel way more organized than I did one year ago. And I've grown relationships with everybody on the team and that's been good. And we all get along well and work together well. And I'm looking forward to continuing to grow the relationship with everybody. Um, I do think it's kind of crazy that, you know, my grandfather raced against John Force. My dad's tuned his funny car and now my brother's going to race against him. I think that's kind of nuts, you know, um, to think about, think that John's raced that long and been successful for so long. So I'm just really looking forward to it. And I just hope we can pick up where we left off at the end of last year and, you know, just continue to grow as a team and it should be good. So. Exciting. Exciting. Now, Thomas, you've done a great job on the starting line, conveying information, doing the media side of your job, which is we rely on it. And whenever we've come your way, you've always uh, answered the call. What about you, Jimmy? You know, a couple of back to back runners up championship fights, championships, mm -hmm. race wins. Um, but now something kind of new and different. Maybe if there was a comfort zone, you know, shaking things up a little bit as your boy is in the uh, cockpit of the race car. Is there anything? you want everybody out there to know as you get ready for this season? Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, like I said, we're blessed. You know, this is an awesome opportunity for us. Um, you know, I'm just excited to get going this year and, uh, you know, race. I think the the racing, NHRA, everything's been, you know, it's at, a, I think, you know, a, a really good level. The competition and everything's awesome. I think, you know, the, the show was good, you know, and I think that uh, I'm just excited for that to go out. And I'd really like to win a championship. Obviously, we try to do that every year. The last couple of years have been tough, you know, getting down to the last day and not getting it done. But uh, you know what? Every year you got to come back and, you know, you got to get ready, assess what you got to do and go do it. it. You know, this the seasons are a grind and all that, but I've done it a long time and, you know, I still love doing it and uh, I'm excited to do it. Awesome. And Austin, same question as your brother and your dad. And uh, Richard had a question about the health of the sport. Your dad answered it. I'm excited too. Like I feel energy and momentum. And I look at our other motorsport competitors, like our silly season has been better than anybody's right. The headlines coming out of NHRA, but what do you want people to know as you get ready for this season? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, ecstatic to get going, you know, uh, back in the seat of a race car and back at the track putting on a show for uh, all our great fans. But uh, just got to say thank you to John Force Racing and, and all of our partners uh, for believing in our family and giving us all a shot to work together. You know, uh, Cornwell Tools and AAA backing us and allowing me to hop in the seat and, uh, you know, get to go race at a professional level with my family is uh you know, something to be very thankful for, um, you know, Chevrolet, like this wasn't an easy uh, transition to make, you know, it had to get okayed and approved by all of our partners and owners and, and drivers and, you know, you name it. So uh, yeah, just very blessed for this opportunity. And uh, hopefully we can, as a family, we can do a really good job for our partners and, uh, you know, make some uh, big headlines. So uh, ready to go stand on the gas, the, the closer it gets to, uh, Bradenton, the more excited I'm getting and, uh, yeah, ready to, uh, go launch in this prop rocket. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. You guys are like the Brady bunch. Have you considered that? Like we got Thomas, we got Jimmy, we got Austin. I'm here, but I don't really count. <laughs> anyway, thank you for making the time. I know like the, the shop had to stop for this interview because we got everybody in here. So thank yeah, you. you got for... half our team right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and uh, I appreciate it genuinely. I do for you guys to make the time and thank you for on the starting line, Jimmy, you always stop and you always give me something good on the starting line. You know, you let us behind uh, your, your thoughts as to whether, you know, good, bad, or otherwise you give us something that means a lot. Thank you. No, well, thank you. Uh, we appreciate appreciate you too, Joe. You do a great job. No, thank you for saying that. All right, back to work. Prox, proc on, and we'll see you in a few weeks. We'll see you at the Gator Nationals, and good luck this season, uh, Austin, Thomas, and Jimmy. Go get it. It's going to be very fun to watch and tell your story. Thank you, Joe.
Thank All you, right. Joe. Thanks, Joe. There they go. There goes Thomas Proc and Jimmy Proc and Austin Proc. And this is WFO Radio. You definitely want to click subscribe on however you choose to get the show, whether it be the video version on YouTube or on Twitter or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud. You know, the WFO mobile app is going to go away. It's going to go away. So you definitely want to resubscribe and hopefully write us a review. All right, everybody. What do you think? What are your thoughts? John Force Racing fans, where is your head at? First of all, I just want to say, because maybe Robert Height is out there uh, watching, like speedy return, speedy return to Robert Height. Wants you out there. And really, uh, maybe someone will, um, you know, maybe Austin will end up in a funny car eventually, regardless. Maybe that's the deal. Maybe this is his calling. But uh, Robert wants you back as soon as is possible. Speaking of great people. Uh, yeah. Proc on proc and roll. Can't wait for Proctober. It's all coming in this big season of NHRA drag racing. Thanks to Steve Brenwald, who writes my jokes on the show. All right. Your thoughts, how are they going to do biggest challenge families racing together? Can they pull it off? And while we do that, let me tell you about the people who make this show possible guys. You might not need them now, but you're going to need them at some point. Total seal piston rings. Are you an engine builder? Are you having an engine built? Do you run in those circles? The technology coming out of total seal is second to none. And the best part is they want to share it. Go to totalseal.com, make them your first call, not your last call when you're in the need of piston rings. Folks at FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters, very similar situation. Got a great team up there in Deland, Florida, and now FTIparts.com. If you put together your own transmissions, you can get the same great parts from FTI that they use to win world championships. FTIparts.com. Fog it. That's right. Fog it. F O G G I T. Can looks like this. It is available on Summit and Amazon and fogit.com. And it is a spray designed to protect what is maybe your most time consuming investment the cylinder surface, the rings and the hone and everything that you've worked so hard to accomplish to seal up your engine. Uh, why let microscopic rust destroy it the second you put your race car away at the end of the night or classic car, you're winterizing your car. You can use fog it to protect the inside of your racing engine, but you know, machinists are using it. Gunsmiths are using it. Get yourself a can at summit or on Amazon or of course, fog it.com Bernie speed shop. Here's the deal, guys. It's my job to let you know that the Gator Nationals Fan Fest is happening at Bernie's the Wednesday before the Emily Motor Royal NHRA Gator Nationals. I think it's the 5th of March. You got to be there. It's going to be amazing. They've got 100,000 square feet of inventory. Maybe go buy a car. They also sell on consignment, classic cars, muscle cars, exotic cars. They sell e-bikes, and they're located in Ocala. It's like 50 minutes from Gainesville Raceway. So plan ahead. Be at Bernie's the Wednesday before the Gator Nationals and just go follow their social. You'll know all of it. CWT Industries. If it rotates, it can be balanced. We're talking the best balance machines in the business. And Randy Neal and his team doing a great job, whether you're using a Caterpillar 3500 Earth Movers, like it's a giant crankshaft that weighs like, I don't know, a thousand pounds. It's incredible. Or... Regular or small luck Chevrolets, LS, Coyote engines. It can balance anything, but it's not just that. It's about the ease and the convenience and the fact that it does so many things in an automated fashion. You're just pressing a couple of buttons, so it's a big evolution off of the old school balance equipment. Now is the time to reinvest in your machine shop with CWT Industries. And maybe you want to balance turbochargers. Maybe you want to balance superchargers. If it rotates, it can be balanced cwt industries and of course the folks at phillips connect.com jim epler invents these sensors that are connected to the web that track the lights on your transportation industry vehicles the tires the brakes the weight is it loaded it was loaded it's no longer loaded where is this thing it's in the you know it's in the port uh-oh problem that's a miami story it, you know you get it phillips connect.com Maybe other places too. Uh, check them out. And if you would like a personalized introduction, email me, Joe at WFORadio.com. Uh, Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School for people who want to try to drive a dragster. They've got a great program called The Dragster Adventure. Head on over there and check it out. Marvin Rodak, great coffee. That's how I start every day with a little Rodak's coffee. 817 924 6821. Call Marvin. 
order the coffee, it'll change your life. And of course, samtech.edu, educating the next generation of machinists. Those are the people that make it possible. And you know, the other day, I don't know how much I talked about it, but I was at Wilson Manifolds dropping off cylinder heads for Project Pontiac. And I got to see some really amazing airflow technology uh, with Keith Wilson over there. And so that's one you definitely want to check out as well. All right, let's see what everybody's got to say about the Proc family. Oh, now it's getting out of control. Proclamania. You know, if I'm Reinhardt, man, or Brian Loans, you got to go to the well on this thing. Bobby Bender out there. What's up, Bobby? Getting ready for Orlando? You going to be there? They sound very positive about it. They do. And why shouldn't they be? You got Jimmy, one of the greatest of all time, if not, you know, the the, the one of the greatest of all time. As, Lawson, as long as Austin Coyle uh, is, is out there as a legend of the sport, um, he's probably going to be the GOAT. But Jimmy Proc, going to be amazing. And Thomas, very smart kid. Great show, Joe. Great interview. Thank you very much. Yes, Proc on. Everybody likes that. Proc on. If you're to this point in the show, I ask you to share the show on your social media. You are our only form of uh, advertisement, lead generation mechanism, however you want to call it. Share the show. Fans of John Force Racing, thank you. And I'll go post it in all those John Force only Facebook groups. Usually the show does pretty well. Uh, Joe, I hope to go to the last two races of 2024, but we'll see what happens. That's a good point, Blake. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I wish you well. Blake is a big fan, and he's going out to the races uh, as often as he can. Uh, Wally Park's 111th birthday, by the way. I wrote that down. 2007, Mr. Parks passed on. How excited are all of us for this future season of drag racing? His innovation, his creation, his dream, his idea. I don't know. You know, he went through the Winston years and the years of, you know, endless financial resources and amazing, you know, the Indy Tower, the tower comes down. I think about Wally, like, you know, would he be proud of where the sport is? And I think the answer is definitely yes. My personal opinion is that it is definitely yes. It's it's spun off so many other different forms of racing, uh, drag racing in particular. You think about all the, the drag and drive stuff, like all of that. It comes under the umbrella that is Wally Parks and NHRA. Amazing. Scott says, I've been a drag racing fan my whole life. But never have I seen so much anticipation to the start of a new season, says Scott. I agree. But that's the thing about the future. And, you know, Reinhardt has got a good line about the, the best, the golden era is today. Because we get to enjoy it. And always optimistic about the future. I'm always optimistic. We are making things better every day. We're making things better every day. What NHRA has done coming up with, you know, the Golden Gator, not only the Wally, but you're going to go after the Golden Gator if you race. It's going to be amazing. Uh, super excited. Steven, great special edition today with the Prox and yours truly, WFO Joe. Thank you, Steven. Appreciate you. Uh, Larry says, lots of fun stories going into this season. The vibe seems a bit different than years past. The vibe. Well, this only happens every once in a great while. It happened after Winston with Powerade. It kind of happened with Full Throttle and with Mellow Yellow, but not really because that was all a Coca-Cola brand. And so as much as it would be a different title sponsor, you're really going to be working with the same people behind the scenes, which gave you the same idea. Camping World, at the start of Camping World, what would they be like? How would they do it? How would they push the sport? How would they use the sport to promote their brand? Think of those big RV races that we had at ZMAX Dragway. That was crazy. And you can still find them on YouTube and on the web. And now the Mission Foods era. The Mission Foods era is about to begin. The starting line, what color will it be? What? How are they going to market? What are they going to do? How are they going to bring it together? How are they going to push the sport? How are they going to use the sport to get us to buy chips and salsa and guac and everything that we need? It's going to be amazing. We're all going to be chubby. But yes, this has only happened a few times. And I can't say for certain, but I was thinking about this a little bit. Winston drag racing, right? Winston. There's something 
psychological about that red, the red on the starting line, those days, the red Winston cup and the red Winston drag racing. And I remember, you know, nine years old going up and get a pack of smokes for my dad. And we didn't know a lot of the stuff that we all know now. Right. So I don't know that I would choose to go back to that. As so many have said, like, yeah, it would be great if we could go back to that. I, I don't need to go to the, back to that. I need to go forward. But red, I like red on the starting line, man. Red on the starting line would be super cool. Red would be a throwback. Red would send a message. Red, like all of our greatest era, like uh, of highlights in our, our childhood was red. Red would be cool. So I'm kind of hoping. I'm kind of hoping that we have a mostly red starting line and the mission foods colors are yellow and they're white and there's red in there. If we could get a mostly red starting line, this is the things I think about, like nobody cares about this, but I care about it. I think it will be good. It's going to Gainesville. All right. Going to Gainesville, baby Gators. Am I going to have a show tomorrow? I am not going to have a show tomorrow. I'm in get ready mode. I'm headed to Oklahoma city. On Friday, super early, and I will be handling a couple of things here around the studios. Has anyone had their ducts cleaned? I have. I'm, that's what I'm doing. Uh, great show today. Uh, Rick says, prayers for a speedy return for Robert. So, haven't spoken with Robert, but I've read many quotes with Robert. Just saw Jimmy talk about Robert. I'm confident uh, that Robert Hyde is going to be back behind the wheel of a funny car. But yes, Robert, we miss you and we appreciate you. Are we going to see you at the pro race, Joe? Unlikely at this point. Not a definite no, but it's unlikely. I will be preparing for Orlando Speed World, the first divisional race of uh, the season, and uh, that is just days after it. So it is possible, but unlikely. Wishing the best to Proc and Sons Racing. Do you think Austin is nervous at all? No, I don't. Uh, Austin is very impressive to me and I think he's been in very difficult situations and I think racing with his dad and his brother, if anything will, would calm him. I don't know. We'll see how it goes though. You never know. Uh, Hey Joe, I don't mean to whine here. Oh, Steven bringing it down, man. But I still, I'm still waiting on my large t-shirt that you promised me. Thanks. Yeah. We sent those out just like yesterday, or the day before we will, you know, Steven is a Patreon and the Patreons, if they sign up for a year, they get a t-shirt. So I'll go back and I'll check that all out, Stephen. I think that was sent out, though. Have you ever seen a bumper crop of Road to the Future contenders that will be competing this year? I don't think it's called the Road to the Future, is it? I don't know. I think it should just be Rookie of the Year. And, uh, yeah, we talked about it yesterday with Alan Reinhardt. And there's a lot of contenders, but only a few of them are running the full season. And I put those folks that are running the full season in the lead. If you run a partial season and someone runs a full season, all things being equal, they're going to beat you. And so you've got a young upstart driver, uh, no, a no one from nowhere coming out of no place. Uh, Tony Stewart going to be running for a rookie of the year in the car that finished third last year. Uh, you got Daniel Wilkerson. You got Richard Gadsden, right? These are the guys I think that are going to be the most in the mix for the, and, and that Sienna wild gust is going to run a full season as I understand it too. So, those are your rookie contenders. Uh, Ida is going to run. Uh, Jacob is going to run for rookie of the year. But if you're not running a full season and you're going up against Daniel Wilkerson and Tony Stewart, it's going to be, they'd have to have really, really shockingly disappointing years. I'm, I hope I'm not pour pouring cold water on the story uh, with this dose of reality. Who doesn't love chips? You know, bad people. Great show, as always, Monica. And Monica is always the first to report when the WFO swag is on sale. And now it's on sale. So if you want WFO shirts, you want the new PBIR shirt, you want the Miami Hollywood Speedway shirt, you want all our WFO stuff, you need a hoodie like I apparently do. Uh, I went to the cold and I don't have a WFO hoodie. I've got all kinds of great other hoodies, but not WFO. I got to get one. It's all on sale in the WFO store. We'll tweet the link. Uh, in fact, it's up in the chat section right now. Doug says all the best to Austin and his family. And uh, Blake says, I'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Blake. Appreciate you watching every week. Thanks to John Force Racing. Hey, John Force Racing fans. Let's get everybody up to speed on what's going on with the Cornwell AAA Camaro and share this show like plaster it everywhere. 
Now we're going to try to connect with John before the start of the season. John is always a consistent WFO guest. Super excited for so many aspects. Seeing Tony Stewart race Brittany Force is going to be pretty amazing. Matt Hagen, Tony Stewart racing, defending a championship. Austin going to try to pry it away from him. It looks like. You know, in that whole, when is Robert going to come back? There are some questions there, but they will be answered. And if you're Austin and you go out there and you have a couple of good races at the start of the season and you're doing well in the points, you know, maybe there's a way for John Force Racing to put a third funny car out there so that Austin can contend for the championship. But that will all happen in time. We'll see. We shall see. Another great week of WFO, The Ignition Show, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud. Go check that thing out. Alan Reinhardt yesterday was very fun. A lot of great tips and a lot of conversation about the next generation of workers, right? like people who do and build and make with their hands, whether it be in machine shops, auto technicians, and how badly we need them. And really, for all you young people, a little leg up on the competition. Like what are people expecting out of you? Like, it's not that tough either. Show up on time and have a light on in there, you know, like be interested. Like I'm interested. Oh, that's great. You're hired. Thanks to Jimmy. Thanks to Austin. Thanks to Thomas. Thanks to everybody for checking out the show. We'll be back next week, Tuesday. Guess who? Angel going to be joining me and Alan Reinhardt and Ron Caps. That's our week. It's already scheduled. Big week next week. Hit subscribe. Don't miss it. WFO.